How's it going everybody? This is RPT and here we are playing for the ultimate prize, the Super Bowl. And I didn't think I was going to make a Super Bowl with the, with the Detroit Lions in my first season in this series, but I mean here I am playing against the Jacksonville Jaguars. So hopefully this is going to be a winnable game and hopefully I can win the Super Bowl for this series, but we'll see how it goes. And the guys are going to take it away for the intro and I hope you're looking forward to uh, the Super Bowl. So the intro is a little bit longer than usual because it's Super Bowl and I guess it's like a minute extra longer, but I hope you enjoy. I'll talk to you guys in just a second, and hopefully I'll win the Super Bowl. Welcome to the Super Bowl, where we are just moments away from a matchup between the Detroit Lions and the Jacksonville Jaguars here at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Two divisional opponents about to meet for the second time, and I know it's going to be a heated affair. Of course it's going to be a heated affair, Jim. These two teams, they play twice a year. They do not like each other. So it's hard in a situation like this to dominate and win two times in a row. Jim Nancy, Phil Sims on the scene to call Super Bowl 47. Phil, it's great to be with you again at the Super Bowl. Yeah, it is, Jim. It's great to be at the Super Bowl again. If I was these teams today, I'd look for the trick plays early because these coaches are daring. They will take chances. So here we are guys kicking off this Super Bowl and I'm so ready to, to get this going. And opening kickoff, Detroit Lions second, Titus Young bringing it to the 25 and what do you know, he fumbles the gosh dang ball. And the Jaguars offense being as terrible as they are, my defense is so much better than what the Jaguars offense is. And Richard Drew breaks a tackle, but they have to settle for a field goal. So three free points for the Jaguar, Jaguars right there. So I get the ball back. Javid, best. Um, nice little first down. Hopefully those won't come too sparsely throughout this game, but get down to a third and eight. And they hit Calvin Johnson over the middle. So I'm thinking this is going to be okay. Calvin Johnson's going to have a big game. Already has 24 yards. And what do you know? On third and 11, had a guy wide open over the middle, but before I could even throw the ball, I was sacked. So Jags got the ball on a third and 13. And he just throws it up in triple coverage and I drop the pick. So, uh, this is a sign for things to come. On uh, first and then, finally got the ball. And then I hit Calvin Johnson again over to about the 40, 30, 20, 10 touchdown line. So, here I am taking a 7 3 lead. All the bull crap that's already happened, and I'm winning the game. So, I'm pretty happy about where I am. On a third and nine, they're doing a five receiver set and shotgun. And what do you know? My safety takes an absolute terrible. Terrible route to the ball, and Robinson scores a touchdown. So Jags leading 10 to 7, and it's not looking good for me thus far on a second and 10. I'm just running with Matthew Stafford, trying to just kneel the ball, and he fumbles the gosh dang ball again. That's already two fumbles for my team. So the Jags end up, this is a second and four, and they do get the first down here off a broken tackle by Maurice Jones Drew, but it doesn't really matter because they kicked the field goal anyway. Well, actually, on a third and 23, throws it deep in the end zone, and it's a flag. A f rough in the pass. I've had a rough in the passer in the last five games. It's ridiculous, but 
Uh, eventually, they, they accepted that, and it's from the 14-yard line, a first and 10, and he throws it up, and Jones drops the pick. So, third down, hoping to stop him, just and hold, hold him to a field goal. So it's still a one-possession game. Blaine Gabbert throws the ball up, and finally, Houston gets the interception, bringing it back to about the 15, 16-yard line, so a break actually goes my way. On a first and ten, this play after this, Javi Best catches it, but what do you know? He fumbles the gosh dang ball again, so how many fumbles is that already? This is stupid. I mean, this is when all madness is ridiculous and when it doesn't get fun, but I'm still in the game, third and 16, throws it up, and what do you know? Drops another freaking pick, so... Jags kick the field goal. I get the ball. First play from scrimmage. Five receiver set. Guys open on a out on a, a route over the middle. But Matthew Stafford terrible throw. So that's another turnover. Another freaking turnover. Interception. So they end up getting a field goal. So how many free points is that off a of turnover for them? Like twenty five. But anyways, it's sixteen seven. So I'm still in the game. They get the ball after halftime. Third and nine. He throws it up, and he decides just to swat it down instead of getting the pick. So it is what it is. Second and seven. I uh, throw the ball, and it is picked off once again by the Jacksonville Jaguars. So, um, kind of annoying. Maurice Jones Drew is gone, running to about the 15-yard line. I don't even know how many times I turned the ball over already. And only be nine, nine points. That's a blessing. But third and 15, can pick the ball off, but he, somehow he catches it. But thank God he was out of bounds and ended up getting a 46-yard field goal out of it. So, they're now up... Um, what is that? 12 points. So I got to start scoring fast, and it's not looking like I'm going to be able to do so. But here I hit Calvin Johnson over the middle. The only guy I can ever rely on. He has 128 yards in this game. On a second and three, I'm looking for Calvin Johnson once again for another first down. But he doesn't get too far, but at least it's a first down. And on second and 10, desperation pass to Calvin Johnson for the touchdown. So Calvin Johnson is the only reason that I'm in this game whatsoever thus far. And it's. Not looking good for me, but on a second and six, throws it up, and Houston gets the interception. So I'm looking like I'm in business, Has a, have a chance to at least come within two points or maybe even take the lead on a first and ten here. I'll see Kevin Johnson open to the right side, throw it to him. Or that's actually Kevin Smith to about the 20-yard line. That is my backup running back who lines up at uh, outside at receiver sometimes on an audible. Calvin Johnson over the middle to the 10-yard line. So I'm 10 yards away from actually taking the lead after everything I've been through so far. And on a third and 10, nobody's open except Stovall, and he drops a touchdown pass. So that's the difference between being ahead by a point, two points and or being down by two points. So I'm losing the round by two points. Second and seven, Robinson catches the ball, breaks a tackle, and he's going to about the 25-yard line. And so he has two receptions for 119 yards so far. On a first and ten, Maurice Jones Drew breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle, and breaks almost breaks another tackle and gets nine yards. So this is looking really, really fair towards me so far. And second and goal from the seven yard line, doing whatever I can to stop him. And Lewis juggles the ball, but he catches it somehow. I don't know how, but he caught it. I mean, you guys can tell how this game is going thus far. On a first and ten, I do hit Stovall to the left side. He is going. Looks like he's going to be gone, but out of nowhere, a gosh dang safety hawks him down at about the seven yard line. Don't know how he didn't score there, but I'm thankful that I got the 80 yards in that play. And on a first and goal, Matthew Stafford looking, nobody open, runs off. Hopefully, he doesn't fumble. He gets knocked into the end zone touchdown line. So I'm going to be down only two points once again. And now we reach the four minute mark left in the fourth quarter, third and eight. This is a really big stop here for my defense if I can get it. Have a chance at least to get a field goal and take the lead. Blaine Gabbert throws it backwards. Don't even know what he did. They called him for holding. But either way, he was down. So I declined the penalty. So it would already be fourth down. So they could punt the ball. So I get the ball back on a first and ten. And I really desperately need to score in this drive. And I throw it to Burleson to about the 40-yard line. So I'm about 30, 40 yards away from field goal range and taking the lead. Matthew Stafford throws it. But Calvin Johnson was open, but out of nowhere, Mathis jumps up. That's a I've thrown that route so many times in the same position and doesn't get picked off. But in this situation in the Super Bowl, all Madden takes over, and they pick the ball off. And it is really annoying going back and watching all this. Maurice Jones Drew breaks three tackles, and he's gone for a touchdown. So realistic, man. This game is just stupid sometimes, but I'm still in it. I'm only down by nine. Two minutes left. I have to score in this drive no matter what. And I hit Stovall over to the left side to about the 50-yard line. But the way this game's been going, it doesn't matter where I am. I'll probably still turn the ball over. 
I see Calvin Johnson open on a post route. He's wide open, and it's a touchdown. So this game's going back and forth. I'm scared to death. I mean, this is a nail-biter. I'm only going to be down by two points at this point in the game. Second and four, two minutes left. I have to stop him, but Maurice Jones-Drew uh, gets the first down, so I'm down to having to use my timeouts. And a third and nine, I have one timeout left. Uh, Blaine Gabbert completes the pass to, to whoever that receiver was, and but pretty much the game I thought was over. But, you know, they passed the ball and threw incompletion, so I don't know what happened there, but it's fourth and 12, and this is where the game is ended. I called a timeout. If you go back, I had a timeout left. I called a timeout, but what do you know? The clock keeps running. I have no clue why that happened. I just speed it up here, but I called a timeout to stop the clock with 50 seconds left, so it would have 50 seconds to score, and it's like it never happened, and the clock keeps running. So that's pretty much what screwed the game over for me. I go through this whole entire series, make it to the freaking Super Bowl, and it comes down to Hail Marys to win the game. I mean, I would have had 50 seconds. I had to throw Hail Marys because I couldn't throw the ball over the middle because you know, the clock rules I had no timeouts left. I'd been better off not even using the timeout because I at least had a timeout to throw the ball in the middle of the field and get the ball pack picked off. And who other than the Jacksonville Jaguars to win this gosh dang Super Bowl on so much stupid crap? I mean, do you guys understand what just happened? 50 seconds left in the game, have a timeout left, perfect situation to have, be able to go down the field and win the Super Bowl. And the timeout, like, doesn't even count. It goes away, but the clock just keeps running like it never happened, which is so annoying, man, but... I mean, obviously the Jacksonville Jaguars were a team of destiny. Because if you don't, if you go back and watch this game and watch the stuff that happened, I mean, it's it's just man, just so stupid. But I mean, it sucks to go all the way through the series and make it to the Super Bowl and to be playing the Jacksonville Jaguars, thinking you're gonna get an easy W, and they come out for seven turnovers with all of that bull crap that happened and win the game by two points. I mean, the game was lost at the very first play of the game. When I fumbled it, and they end up getting a field goal out of that out of that drop. I mean, I can't control fumbles. I can sometimes control interceptions, but I can't control fumbles. And that's, I mean, that how's that my fault? And how's everything that happened my fault? It's it's really annoying, and I am kind of mad mad about it because I went through this whole series, make it to the Super Bowl, and lose the Jags. But like I said, obviously they're a team of destiny. Um, and I guess I'm just gonna let you watch the rest of the Super Bowl presentation. So I hope you guys enjoy this series. The series is now over. This is the last episode of the series. I'm not going to do it second season with it, but I am doing an NCA Dynasty from now on and uh, some other stuff. So I hope you guys enjoy. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. For the next Madden game, I'll be definitely doing another series. I mean, I might make another series in the future, but right now I'm not going to worry about doing any more Madden series because this kind of made me kind of mad. But I'll definitely be making another Madden series for Madden 14, so I'll be looking forward to that. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. So. Let me know what you thought about the whole entire series in the comments below. Uh, I like hearing your guys' feedback. Let me know what you thought about this game because I know you all noticed that it was bull crap. And there's Blaine Gabbert holding up the Super Bowl trophy, which we'll, we'll never see in our lifetime. Um, but whatever. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I, I appreciate you guys watching all my videos, so thank you. And uh, have a great day, and see you later.